Welcome if you're new here, welcome back. If you're not, my name is Debbie Wombolt, aka Mini of Mini Soaps. And I realized this morning that I hadn't done a garden tour this year. And um, so to be honest, it's been a tough summer. Um, some of you watching this might know, some don't. Um, I ended up getting pots, uh, postural orthostatic tachycardia from having contracted COVID back in October. So I'm still adjusting to meds um, and really it's it's been tough. That's my neighbor. It's been tough to get um, used to uh, a new way of navigating um, chronic illness another layer to my chronic illness so it's been a bit of a tough year also we have had some really devastating weather events uh this year like uh very very severe storms and flooding and uh drought all that kind of stuff so the gardens aren't exactly what they should be um so i decided i would give you a bit of a a bit of a look at how things are um, as disappointing as they are this year so welcome this is homestead one um, if you're new here I have two properties that we are maintaining uh, in the goal of eventually living on homestead two so this is homestead one where we live right now I'm on the front porch Sophie's over there that's my trusty sidekick let's have a look around all right so the front porch i mean i always keep some plants here this is my new uh ginkgo tree that i have to decide where i want to plant um of course my bonsais are out here uh caladiums and various other indoor -y type plants uh, my bird of paradise that looks really sad a few other things from inside uh, I always bring out my jasmine uh, and grow it outside. It does much better outside. Uh, I collect these little flowers from it and dry them and use them in my products. Um, I have some herbs here. Of course, I'm growing rosemary. I use rosemary in my shampoo bars and my soaps. <clears throat> I have Thai basil this year. I have pineapple sage. Tulsi basil. I'm growing for use in products. We moved this rhododendron from the backyard out to the front yard this year. That was a project that we did in the early spring. Um, so, and another project that we did this year, my husband built me this um, planter box, which I wanted because I've discovered my love for uh, canna lilies and so I wanted to display them and see them grow which they're really struggling with all this weather they're not really doing well uh, surprisingly my rose of Sharon or hardy hibiscus is doing not too bad the Japanese beetles as you can see are eating it quite badly I got a pepper plant planted here uh, I only did one pepper plant this year um, I never had much luck with them, so I really just started to try. Um, this garden has mint in it. It has my sword lilies, a lot of day lilies. As you might know, I love my day lilies. And my echinacea that I planted last year is really showing up this year. Uh, some of my lavender. My lavender did pretty well this year. Uh, it's already been harvested. And I've been harvesting the echinacea because I'm going to use that in several products. Um, so that's that garden. Of course, there's roses in there, which I did get to harvest some rose petals from. Uh, mint, of course, I use in my shampoo bars. Over here, this garden is looking pretty sad. Um, in this garden is some winter savory that's this stuff right here and some golden oregano love those two herbs 
this year I put in some white lavender. So it's English lavender, but it's elegant snow. And so that will get white blossoms. And the white blossoms of this really smell uh, sweet. Um, they're not quite as as uh, camphorous or, or woody as the purple lavender when they bloom. So I like that. The Japanese maple is doing well, getting a bit of sunburn and beetle damage. Um, just planted these columbines. It's a, um, a variety that grows different colors um, on one plant, which I really liked. Um, the hummingbirds love those. I divided up some of my daylilies this year for sale. My cranesbill, of course, has gone off. This stuff, if you're looking for something easy to grow, cranesbill is great. Uh, in there is a an azalea that I need to move to a better location. So over here uh, is another one of my gardens where I do have some herbs that I use in it. Uh, so out here growing is chocolate mint, which you can tell chocolate mint by its brown stem, and ginger mint. Now I'll see if I can find a piece of ginger mint to show you the difference. Now ginger mint is really spicy. Um, I also planted in here some more of that white uh, lavender, that English lavender, and it's called Elegance Snow. I really need to get in here and weed. A couple little hostas that I love, the little tiny hostas. Uh, this is my purple lavender, which is also done. It did really well this year. Uh, it needs a good pruning. Lots of mint in here, as usual. Um, here is my thyme patch, which is also doing really well this year. Um, I've harvested off of this a couple of times already, and it's uh, drying. That makes a really good tea. Um, it also goes really well in different soaps. Um, it's good for your skin. It's good for your body. Uh, bee balm is one of my favorite, favorite things, and I have a couple of different three different varieties here. I have this red variety. The This is more of the wild variety of bee balm. And this is a cultivar, a purple cultivar. And I've been harvesting off of there. Uh, another, of course, I have my Japanese maples. I love my Japanese maples. Um, they're getting attacked by the beetles quite badly. Um, my azalea, that was a, it looked really good when it bloomed and then the beetles came and now it looks pretty sad. Uh, new additions here. Okay, new additions in this garden. I put these lawn ornaments here because t a deer came and chewed off my lilies early in the spring. So this kind of puts a barrier there. This uh, this little thing squeaks. Um, this is orange balm. So it has a really nice citrus orange flavor. And there's la um, lemon balm over there. Lemon balm is something that also that I use. I just got these beautiful Black Eyed Susans from uh, a dear friend and customer of mine. Uh, lupins did well this year. I lost my dragon's tail willow. It rotted, so we've cut that off. We moved um, this boxwood um, over here, and we also moved my <coughs> dogwood over here, and I got a tree peony this year. So we had to cover up this and take out this whole um, raised bed that was here. There was a raised garden bed here and we had to take that all out, cover it in landscape fabric 
and uh, just totally dig this whole thing out because we are invaded by these um, sun chokes, but we are also invaded by creeping bellflower. And you can see down here that it's starting to make its way back over and into my garden. And this stuff is totally invasive and absolutely difficult, very, very difficult to get rid of. That is the cedar that I've had planted here for a number of years. It just kind of makes a nice um, buffer for this garden. Uh, let's see, I put my zucchinis in bags again this year and they're really not doing well. And I hear that from a lot of people. Um, there is a vine borer and a problem with just too much moisture. So next year I have plans to plant these up on our property. Uh, coming over here, my cucumbers I put in bags this year. They're not doing well. I really have no, um, I really have no idea why they're not doing well other than they're just not liking being in these bags. Um, I did put some fertilizer in here yesterday hoping that I can save them as you can see um, if I can get out of the light as you can see the leaves are pretty chlorotic um, so that tells me they're deficient um, so my tomatoes they're doing pretty good I got a couple of ripe ones on there and I didn't plan on having this many tomato plants this year but I ended up with quite a few um, this is my onion patch and it looks bad because there are a lot of weeds in here, but weeds in your under onion patch aren't as bad as what you think. It keeps the moisture in there and it holds the ground up around your onions. Um, I don't know if you can see in here, but my onions are looking pretty good. So there's my blueberry bush. Uh, she's a superstar. I chopped this blueberry bush quite a bit this year chopped it right down um, and of course you can see she's got some beautiful big blueberries on her we're gonna be harvesting those tonight um, in here I've got coli rabbi um, they're not doing the greatest they're pretty sad looking marigolds big double bloom marigolds Right along here is where I had my peas. My first batch of peas got smashed down by the rain. Um, and so I got a little bit off of there, but not as much as I wanted. So I purchased a later pea variety. And I can't tell you what the variety is, but I planted those as a secondary crop. I have Swiss chard in here and I had lettuce in here but of course my lettuce is all done um, i might get a little bit more off of here i really need to get at the weeding but that's of course something that you don't get to do a lot of when you're having trouble so coming in here of course that's my greenhouse it's a total disaster surprise surprise We've got our rain barrels. Now this year we, of course, don't have much need for them. Um, hollyhocks this year have been just incredible. Um, I like to put hollyhocks in random places all over the yard because I just love them and they're easy to grow. Uh, the sisters, if you're a regular follower of mine, you'll know the sisters very well. Uh, that is willow and wisteria. And once again, my wisteria didn't bloom for me. Look, it's Sophie being all cute. Um, yeah, my wisteria didn't bloom for me again. And we actually, uh, we put a ladder up there as high as we could reach and just chopped her totally down, thinking that would help her bloom this year. But she, wisteria just doesn't want to bloom. And if you have any tips, I'd love to hear it. So over here is my newest bed and it requires some attention again lots of hollyhocks i've got a lilac in here i lost my lilac out front years ago another tiny little 
um, hosta in there. Love the little hostas. This is my um, calendula, and I have some arnica planted in there. This was all chamomile this year, which I got a bumper crop of chamomile off of here. Um, this is my mock orange bush. And then there's a snowberry over there and some roses, of course. And that over there, that spot right there is where we had the rhododendron that we moved out front. Another one of my Japanese maples in the back there. I just love these hollyhocks. Aren't they just stunning? Such a beautiful, vibrant purple color. And then, of course, these ones look even different. I just love hollyhocks so much. Um, the one thing I love about back here and the wildness um, that property right over there we don't own that it's full of sun chokes it's full of jewelweed and it's got um, hazelnuts over there and so it's very good habitat for the birds and the birds just love it over there my clematis I grow here it just covers up this corner really nicely um, of course, there's the, uh, I forget what variety this is, but it's like a bleeding heart. It's like the old school bleeding heart is what I call it. I've got some wood sorrel here that I've been uh, munching on. I love that. It's a great addition to your salad if you're interested. And of course, the, the girls. The girls are a new addition to the yard this year. Uh, I got these girls from a friend of mine, Valerie, and friends of ours, Valerie and Charlie Jollymore, who have a, a really large flock of hens. Um, and these hens are semi-retired girls, but they still lay eggs for me. And they are my composters. If I have invasive weeds, these girls eat them right up. And they love the Japanese beetles too. So they're very spoiled girls. They think I'm bringing them treats, but I am not. Um, so that's the new addition. I call it the Hen Palace in the backyard. So coming over here once again, uh, this is my purple clematis. And this really showed up this year. I chopped this right down to the ground and it just uh it really enjoyed it and it's come back full force it's just really beautiful this is my honeysuckle and i harvest these and that's what i put in my honeysuckle lip balm and these are our potatoes i've had the best luck growing potatoes in these fish tubs um we always get a bumper crop of potatoes from those so next year i'd like to double or triple my amount of um, bins so that we can have more potatoes. I'm really working towards um, having a, bi a bigger crop. So going back this way, that's my bin for cleaning out the chicken house, which is also another perk to having backyard hens. You get to keep their poop and their poop is amazing. Uh, my hydrangea. I think I skipped past this. My hydrangea has really, really gone crazy this year. This, everyone comments on this tree. This is a honeysuckle tree. Um, so the birds love this tree. They absolutely love it. They come and they eat those little, I don't know if you can see them, but there's leftovers. Those little tiny red berries that are left on there. They eat those right up. And the hummingbirds love the flowers in the early summer, uh, it totally flowers out. Uh, there's another hazel tree there. Um, not on my property, but I'm gonna make use of that. Pastas, lots of pastas around. And we'll come back out to the front. I'm just gonna show you what I have growing over here on the driveway, by the driveway. So I'm really proud of how this is coming along this year um so i've got some yucca planted in here underneath the chestnut tree um some different hostas which i'd like to add a few more to this uh this is my 
colocasia that I usually have in the house that I brought outside and some more colocasia that I planted in pots this year. The chestnut tree is getting a haircut this year. My peonies didn't do very well. They got really rusty in the rain. So I was very disappointed. This is wormwood. Um, I'm working on a product made from this um, for in the future. And that is about it. So that's about it for Homestead One. Um, there's a, not as much packed into here as we normally have uh, because we made use of Homestead Two this year. Uh, I'm really pleased with how things are growing up there and I'm going to try to do a garden tour of Homestead Two, um, maybe tomorrow if it's not raining, it's supposed to rain, but we'll see. I'll try to have this edited and put up very soon uh, but one never knows how things are going to go, right? So I hope you guys are having a great summer. Um, oh yeah, and I chopped my hair up a while ago. It was uh, it's thinning quite a bit, so my vacuum was not liking that, so I chopped it off. So yeah, that's Homestead 1. Hope you guys enjoyed the video.